that's heavy. Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to the Beamer Barn. In today's episode, we're gonna be servicing the oil pan gasket on my E46 wagon. Now, this procedure is gonna to apply to all all-wheel drive BMW models, so I'm gonna break it down kind of step-by-step step to the basics, and then we'll go into more specifics on my E46, but if you've got like an E90 or E92 335i X-Drive, or any 535i X-Drive, any all-wheel drive car, it's gonna be pretty simple to get the oil pan off. Just a couple of added steps besides the regular procedure. So let's go ahead and pick right up where we currently left off with removing the front axles on the car. Now, if you didn't see my previous episode, we removed the front axle shafts out of the car. And right after we finished making that video, I just removed the 18 millimeter bolts that hold the struts to the spindles. And then the spindles came right down. Now I removed the uh, 18 millimeter or the 21 millimeter bolt that holds the control arm. So the control arms are back there with the axles. And up here we have the brake rotors, the front spindle assemblies, as well as the calipers. And like I said, you're going to need to remove the axles in order to remove the oil pan because the axles sit in the middle of the oil pan and there's no way, I mean, you could, I guess, kind of take everything down as one assembly, but you'd be making a huge mess. So what's next you might ask? Well, we definitely need to remove the subframe in order to get access to the differential. You can see the opening there, that is the differential and the front differential shaft right there. So in order to get that down, we need to get this subframe removed that you can see this steel beam here, a little bit of rust on it. We're gonna see if we can clean it up at the same time comes up right here. And this is a very different subframe than the rear wheel drive car. So if you're trying to see where the bolt locations are, they're different between the two. This one has one up here and uh, then a couple more back here. It's kind of different. The factory rear wheel drive subframe actually has a mounting spot that is right there and uh, it's capped. I think that you can use a rear wheel drive subframe and all that. But if you're gonna do a real drive conversion on this car, you're gonna have an issue with the transmission cross member because the transmission tunnels are different. Now, since that subframe is holding essentially the entire motor, we're gonna have to put a cross brace up here from side to side that's gonna hold the motor and suspend it in the air while we pull everything off from the bottom. So let me show you guys that and let's go ahead and get it set up on the car. So this engine support bar right here supports the weight of the motor so that when we drop the lower subframe, it doesn't bring the motor with it. Uh, you can see on the M54s, they come with this neat little uh, factory hook location. So if you've got a tool like this, it makes it really simple to grab onto. And you wanna make sure that when you're using one of these tools, that the legs here are on the frames of the car. So like the frame rails there, like the fender rails. So those are strong enough to withstand the weight of the engine and just tightening this up just a little bit to lift the motor so that when we drop the subframe, it doesn't move too much is uh, what we've already done. So the next thing that we're gonna do is go under the car and start working to get that subframe loose. So as you saw, we had to remove the nuts that hold the motor mounts to the subframe. Then I got this bolt right here for the steering shaft, which we're gonna remove in a second. Goose is straight chilling under the subframe here. Also had to remove the sway bar end links on both sides because the sway bar is attached to the subframe, so it's gonna come down. But now the next thing that we're gonna have to do, and let me see if I can get the steering shaft off easily, make it look easy for you guys. There you go. Oh yeah, 
Look at that. See, it, it, it goes easy when the camera's rolling. So that lifts straight up, and that's part of the steering column right there. So it'll stay up in the air, and the uh, steering rack's gonna come down. But obviously, uh, the steering rack is still connected by some uh, power steering lines, and they're really hard to see, but they're right there at the front of the steering rack. So we're gonna have to pull those off so that the steering rack isn't bunched up by anything and then we'll be able to uh, drop it with the subframe so it'll stay 100% attached. Well, that was a lot easier than I expected. All you do is you grab the smaller one, which is a 19 millimeter from this side here. And obviously we can move the sway bar out of the way, get plenty of room to get the smaller banjo bolts. And then we got the bigger banjo bolts, which is a 22 millimeter. And that disconnects both lines from the power steering rack. So there's only two, or sorry, four bolts that we need to worry about to get the subframe down. That's gonna be the 18 millimeter that's right here and then the 18 millimeter that's right here. So there's two per side, four total. And I'm gonna go ahead and grab a jack and put it under the front of the subframe here to put some pressure on it. And then that way we'll be able to slowly drop it down here rather than just let it fall. So hopefully everything goes smooth and wish me luck. Well, there it is. Our entire lower subframe removed from the car, completely free. Um, made a little bit of a mess with the power steering because some still is coming out of the reservoir, but uh, try to get as much of it with the uh, container as possible. So yeah, it's completely free now here, the two banjo bolts I was telling you about. Pretty basic to get these subframes off. And now we've got access to the oil pan and the differential here. So what we're gonna have to do now is remove the front drive shaft because that is holding itself to the differential. And then we'll be able to remove the differential and then eventually the whole oil pan. Now here to give you guys a better look at what's going on, I'm removing the motor mount and we also have two brand new motor mounts to install as well. So that's something that you wanna grab if you're doing this job. Now before we drop the differential, we have to drain the fluid out of it. So here I'm using a 14 millimeter Allen on a socket in order to get both of the plugs loose and that's gonna let all the fluid out of it. And then finally, the differential is held in by four 16 millimeter bolts. Once you get all those loose, be really careful because this thing is pretty heavy and it'll drop down to the ground. Now we're almost ready to get the oil pan off, so we need to drain the oil out of it. That's held in by a 17 millimeter oil pan bolt.
And then over here, we need to disconnect the ground line that's connecting the motor to the chassis. That's held in by a 13 millimeter nut. Now here, you can see that I'm removing the transmission line bracket. Now, something else that I'm getting over here is the oil dipstick tube. It's held in by a 13 millimeter bolt to the engine support arm and just removing that bolt lets us get the dipstick tube loose enough so that we can remove the oil pan. Now we got the oil pan loose, but it's not gonna come down all the way until we remove the power steering pump. So here I'm removing the fan clutch assembly and the shroud so that I can get the belt loose. And then I'm loosening the three bolts that hold the power steering pump on. You can see my other video if you want more detail where we changed the pulleys and belts on this M54. Well, just like that, with uh, a whole day's work later, we've got the oil pan out. So you can see it gave me a little bit of trouble at the end there. I had to uh, pull off the three bolts that hold the power steering pump on because it was just too close to the oil pan in order to get it free. But once we did that, it came down pretty easily. I will say that the dipstick tube is super long, so that is not going to be as fun to install as it was to remove. But then again, it really wasn't that fun to remove either. Don't forget the three bolts that hold the transmission to the oil pan. Pan. They're facing this way and they're torques, but other than that, they're all 10 millimeter bolts that go along the oil pan here. They're made out of steel, so you're going to reuse them and uh, make sure you don't lose any. And also there's a couple of different length ones, so make sure that you don't get them mixed up either. Now what I really want to do is get some of these parts pressure wash, like the oil pan, the subframe for sure, because I think we're going to probably take the rack out of it and then spray paint the spots that have rust. The differential here, we're going to need to clean that as well. We have new seals for everything, so the diff, the axles that go into the diff, and everything. Everything's got new seals for us to replace, including the oil pan gasket. I also have the E46 oil pump nut mod that we're going to be doing, so stay tuned for that next episode. We're probably going to do its own episode just so that we can kind of talk about the issue, make sure that we get the solution done correctly, but we'll address it, and then we'll have this thing back together in no time, and we'll put the new axles in. Hopefully this thing is gonna drive a ton better. So there you have it folks. That's how to remove the oil pan on your E46 all wheel drive car. I hope you guys learned something and don't be afraid to comment down below if you have any questions about doing this on your own car or maybe you have some helpful tips about a good way to make this easier on yourself or me. Obviously I think that it's not too bad of a job but you're definitely gonna get dirty. A lot of oil and stuff and grease and stuff just lands on your face when you do this sort of thing and you're doing it on your back. So maybe one day we'll get a lift and I'll be able to show you guys a little bit better how to do these jobs. But I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and I tried really hard to get up close shots, all the details on all the components that you have to remove in order to do this. So if you enjoyed the video, please, please, please leave a like down below. Go ahead and leave a comment as well because that helps the algorithm. And subscribe to the channel if you want more BMW content like this. As always, I hope everyone has an awesome day and we will see you in the next video.